Well, good morning, everyone. We want to welcome you to Las Vegas, Nevada for a, let's hear this together, an in-person event. Uh, welcome to Coverings, and uh, we're excited to be with you today uh, to bring to you the state of the stone industry. Uh, this is a session that we do annually because it's, it's absolutely fantastic to bring together some of the leadership of the Natural Stone Institute, uh, the leading trade association for natural stone to kind of talk about key initiatives and also answer any questions that you might have. Now before we get started, obviously there's some housekeeping things we need to do. If you have an opportunity, if you have a cell phone, please mute it or turn it off as a courtesy to everyone. Uh, we encourage you to take photographs, of course. Jennifer's taking them right now for Stone World Magazine. Uh, but some of you in attendance may be here from the design community. And so if you are a member of the AIA, or if you're an interior designer, um, in the back of the room on the table are all the necessary forms that you may need to get your credit. Um, and again, we just want to welcome everyone, and we're grateful to have you with us today. So um, our panelists today is some of the leadership team from the Natural Stone Institute, and I'm going to ask each of them to introduce themselves. And, and so, uh, Buddy Antra, our board president. Buddy, would you uh, share a little bit about yourself? Uh, certainly. Uh, I'm Buddy Antra. I have a, um, I own a small countertop fabrication shop, uh, NSI accredited in Bridgeport, Connecticut. I've got 11, maybe 12 employees. It uh, kind of fluctuates a little bit. Uh, mostly single-family residential, and, uh, you know, just happy to be here today. Dwayne. Morning, everyone. I'm Dwayne Nockan with Stone Interiors in Columbia, South Carolina. I'm a large fabricator. Uh, we've got about 70 employees, um, focusing pretty heavily on big box work, and uh, I'm the current vice president of the Institute. Evan. All right, good morning. Good morning, Las Vegas. Uh, Evan Cohen from Quality Marble and Granite. We are in uh, Southern California, importer and distributor uh, of natural stone and other uh, hard surfaces. We also uh, do uh, residential, commercial, and uh, cut to size projects. And currently the secretary on the uh, board of directors of the Natural Stone Institute. And prize winner for having the best looking headshot of all of us. And uh, so the setup here has been Buddy Antra is our current board president. Dwayne will be next year's president. Evan will be the following year president. So what I've showcased for you is all of my bosses for the next three years and uh, our immediate past president, Michael Pico. Michael? Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Pico. I started Pico Engineering 30 years ago this year. It's our 30th anniversary, and our focus is on pretty much anything to do with natural stone. We also work in other facade materials, but uh, we do sourcing, specifying, drawings, engineering, consulting, uh, like I said, pretty much anything to do with natural stone over the last 30 years. And my name is Jim Heave. I'm the CEO for the Natural Stone Institute, which has over 2,000 members in over 55 countries, um, and just excited to have my leadership team here. Um, someone who's unable to be with us, uh, some of you may know Katie Jensen, who's the president of Triton Stone. Uh, Katie's in Italy right now, and otherwise she would have been with us, and that's a tough choice. Las Vegas, Italy, Las Vegas, Italy, um, but anyway, uh, you'll see her on future panels as well. And so uh, before we get started, uh, we've introduced our audience. Uh, this is your time for audience participation. We'd like to learn a little bit more about who's in the room. Um, so by show of hands, and this is the same industry segment list that you'll find on the Coverings website. So we know that you fit somewhere, okay? Uh, by show of hands, any architects and designers in the room? Okay, we've got Scott with us. Builders, remodelers? Distributors? We've got a few. Stone fabricators? Contractors and installers? Thank you. Retailers? Got the big group in the front. And all the good looking people. Okay, all the hands should go up. All right, and let's find out a little about where you're from as well. Who's from Canada? Mexico? United States? Outside of North America? Okay, very good. 
So um, as, as you saw and read through the uh, industry description, um, you know, we've got some big issues that our industry is tackling. Uh, but first and foremost, we want to thank you for being at Coverings and, uh, and for being with us. So a couple things as we get started. You know, our first learning objective is, was really to kind of talk about the big picture issues. So we're dealing with things like sustainability and creating standards for sustainability, uh, global standards. Uh, not only does the Natural Stone Institute publish the Dimension Stone Design Manual, which is largely revered as the Bible of, of the natural stone industry, we're involved in leading um, ISO standards and creating global standards for natural stone. But we're also working on the promotion of natural stone and trying to reach architects. So we're gonna talk a little bit about these issues today. And I wanna start with sustainability uh, because you may not know there are a growing number of companies in the United States that are uh, guiding their companies to acquire the natural stone sustainability standard. It's an ANSI credentialed standard. And we're working very hard to educate the design community about the fact that, I mean, how many of you believe that natural stone is sustainable? I mean, in our hearts, we know that, but we've got to be able to prove it by setting standards, and, and we're doing that. So, Michael, at a very high level, could you kind of talk about the work that's being done and why sustainability is important from your perspective? Um, when I was president last year, I made this one of the initiatives for us because I really felt that uh, natural stone has a real opportunity in the market. We're way behind some of the other competing materials out there as far as documentation and real data that you can share with architects and designers or builders on how does natural stone compare to the other materials. So we're working on several fronts to try and get that data together. And um, one of them is the, uh, the natural stone sustainability standard that Jim spoke to. It's a standard that examines and verifies through a third party areas of stone production. And it measures things like water consumption, uh, energy, custody of transportation, chain of custody, chemicals and use of chemical materials in, in the production. What do you do with excess materials? Innovation in your production facility site management, land reclamation uh, for the quarriers, um, and human and health safety, uh, health and safety. So corporate governance is another issue. So it really covers several aspects that are all related to sustainability in different ways. It's not just about energy or water. It covers the whole gamut. And uh, we really encourage uh, our members to participate in that and look into that because it's there's more and more people getting certified and the more we can get certified with this it'll differentiate you from some of the other people in the market we're also trying to educate the architectural and design community of the importance of this standard and the NSI took over ownership and uh, promotion and stewardship of this uh, standard in 2021 so we are wor really working hard on, on promoting that this year and beyond you know, so Buddy, uh, this was an initiative that we took on under Mike's year when he was president. Um, we're going to continue it this year as you're guiding the Natural Stone Institute. Can you share some perspectives of why you think this is so important? Well, uh, Mike started this train rolling. It's not going to stop. <laughs> um, he's done a great job with it. And, uh, but our decision makers, whether they're design, builders, homeowners, are getting younger. I've got three kids who are in their 30s. And I was remembering, you know, my, my stepdaughter questioning the recycling we were doing. Why do we put the newspapers in the blue bin, but not the boxes, the cereal boxes? And, that's, and that has changed, so where they accept that, those types of paper products now, too. So all the, the consciousness of, you know, sustainability, uh, green movement, uh, earth stewardship is, is really, you know, become prominent in the minds of, well, society, period. Um, but what we can do with the natural stone is we have, you know, the certifications that he talked about. We have, uh, you know, accreditations for the, the, the countertop fabricators and installers. And part of their process to get that certification is just showing that we are, you know, conscious of the stuff. We are doing the right thing. We're uh, recycling our water. Just, you know, just the little itty bitty things that just make a small difference that when combined by millions and millions, it, uh, makes a big difference. So I want to give you an easy button. 
Um, the Natural Stone Institute's website is naturalstoneinstitute.org. So your easy button to learn more about sustainability is forward slash sustainability. So just know our website, forward slash sustainability, learn more about the standard, and be looking at what your company can do to position yourself for when that interior designer, that architect walks in the door and says, hey, I'm concerned that natural stone's not sustainable, that you've got and you have prepared your company to embrace that movement because it's not going away. Yeah, um, we're, put, we're putting that, you know, the, what, what Jim just said, that information's there as the man-made materials have a pretty good head start just because of their arsenal of the documentation and such. And um, as most, many, if not, you know, most of our, uh, uh, you know, business owners are smaller, don't really have the resources to just go ahead and do it. So the Institute, uh, the Natural Stone Institute, uh, we are putting that stuff together in a, in more of a mass rather than a company by company, uh, you know, situation. Michael, we're doing more. What's next for us? Um, yeah, I mean, the standard is really reflecting on our industry internally and measuring our, what we're doing. Um, what we're, we're also working on is the data to present to architects and, and designers and builders on actual data, which is EPDs. And most products have EPDs out there. We're behind, but we have the process in place right now. We're about halfway through it, and we should have three EPDs published by August this year with more to come. So again, we just need that information out there. I mean, I recently spoke to a builder and said, wow, with sustainability, it must be really tough with stone because that can't be really sustainable. And I said, no, exact, ac actually, it's the opposite. You need to give us that information. That's what he said. We're just not aware of it. So this is something we're really working very hard on and understand we're, we're a little behind on that, but we're diligently working to get that information out there. Mike mentioned those three EPDs. How many do countertop work? How about pavers or flooring? How many put stone on a building, cladding? We're creating EPDs for each of those applications. So we're getting the industry ready, preparing for you, giving you the tools and resources to take those EPDs and apply them into your business. So that's, that's coming as well. Any questions about sustainability or the work we're doing on EPDs? And again, remember, you can find all this information. Just go to our website and type forward slash sustainability. Scott, go ahead. So you, you mentioned that the sustainability standard, NSI, took over ownership status. How does, how does that work? Right. So um, uh, uh, our dear friend Scott from Chicago asked, you know, how did the Natural Stone Institute become the stewards or the owners of this? So the sustainability standard was actually created by the Natural Stone Council which is a consortium of a number of trade associations in North America serving the natural stone community. Um, they, cre they developed it, they got ANSI to become the official secretariat, and then we were asked to take over ownership to kind of take it to that next level, to market it, to educate the, not only the, the stone industry about it, but also the design community. So you'll see all kinds of resources that we've created for the A&D community, where they can learn about sustainability, get their credits for it, Scott, and so forth. So it was really a simple ownership change, but we're working in tandem with ANSI on that. Okay, the second thing that we're working very diligently on is you'll remember that I mentioned that the Dimension Stone Design Manual is really the Bible for installation. And you should have a copy of that resource library in your resource library. But we are not the only organization that has published standards for the installation of natural stone. Our friends in Brazil have standards. Europe has standards. India, China. So there are over 300 technical documents that guide the industry through what are the standards for natural stone. And so about two years ago, there was a movement to create an ISO standard for quartz surfaces and natural stone combined. Now you think about that. We want the quartz industry to have standards because that gives you the tools you need. But we don't want natural stone and quartz to be combined into one standard because that's only going to further confuse the consumers and the architects about 
Is it natural or is it not? So we banded together with a lot of trade associations around the world, and we got that standard to be separated. So ISO is creating a global standard for quartz surfaces. They're also creating one for natural stone. Who is leading that natural stone effort? It's the Natural Stone Institute. And so we'll be working with our partners around the globe, and we have an active committee. Um, but, you know, that's, that's kind of what's happening. And Evan, I want to turn it over to you because, you know, as a distributor, you're selling multiple building products. You sell quartz, you sell natural stone, you sell other products as well. Why is this so important? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> first of all, having that separated uh, was a huge win, uh, really. And not just uh, for the natural stone, but just to separate them to, as Jim said, to avoid the confusion that's out there between the two. <clears throat> they can't be considered the same. They, there's a lot of differences between the man-made products and the natural stone products. So to really clarify that is fantastic. The next thing is, you know, we do a lot of, uh, a lot of cut to size and a lot of uh, commercial projects overseas. We do stuff in Brazil. We do stuff in Spain, Italy, uh, China. And to imagine that each one of them is going by a different standard, uh, we don't know what we're going to get. We have to follow their standards and find out what their standards are and constantly make sure we're you know, aligned with all their standards. So being able to have it all in one has been, you know, will be extremely instrumental in making sure that the overall standard that's out there is, is a single uniform standard that everybody follows and creates a uh, uh, uniform alignment there. So to me and for the future and for what we're seeing coming into, uh, obviously into the U.S. and into these projects, I think this is very important to have it all aligned and under one standard that everybody follows. And so just to kind of recap so you kind of know the process we're going through, it takes about three years to develop an ISO level standard, and we're just at the starting point of year two. Um, who's leading this is um, Chuck Mulebauer, who's the technical director for the Natural Stone Institute. He has accepted the role as, a, a, as chairman of this effort. It's a five-year term. I wouldn't wish that term on anyone, but he's taken it on, and I have all the confidence in the world that, that uh, we're going to get this done. Um, and I want to thank this leadership team for saying, you know, who is going to guide this and make this happen? And they've given us the blessing and the funding to be working on this. Um, ANSI is the official secretariat of this effort. And um, after they're done helping us create it, then we're going to petition for the Natural Stone Institute to become the secretariat after that. Um, but Dwayne, I think, you know, we've talked about the, how we got here. Um, Evan's given some perspectives. Can you kind of recap what we hope to accomplish? Yeah, I mean, it's many of the things we talked about through the steps here. You know, it's creating that uniform standard uh, that applies for everybody. A and the, the blessing that it is that we control that standard instead of having some other institution somewhere else dictating to our members and to, to the U.S. how that's going to work. W us being in control of that is just invaluable. Um, the other thing is helping alleviate the misunderstandings with things. You know, you talk about language barriers, cultural barriers between the different countries we interact with, um, just simple miscommunication of things between them. Having this standard helps clarify all of those things for everyone. Um, also, it's going to ultimately help save some money for everybody because now we're all on the same standard. There should be less reworks, less confusions. Uh, we can unify processes. Um, so overall, it should be a cost savings for people as well. <laughs> and then once again, it helps uh, preserve market share for us. You know, how many people shy away from using natural stone because of confusion with the industry and, and what they have to do to pick things out and select them properly. This will help eliminate some of that as well. And I just want to clarify, so on a parallel track, a standard's being developed for quartz, a standard's being developed for natural stone, and we are talking to each other. So don't feel that this is being done in a vacuum. We are talking to each other as well so that, um, you know, there, where there are parallels, we can be using the same language and, and so forth. So this is not a sexy topic, but it's certainly something that, you know, you want to know is happening. And that's the value of what trade associations, not just ours, but that trade associations bring to the global community. Any questions about kind of the development of that standard? Marco.
So kind of to paraphrase um, what Marco, first of all, Marco is one of the premier fabricators in the New Jersey market. If you ever have a chance to stop by and see his facility, it's first rate, great showroom, great host. They're doing a lot of work with the A&D community. So Marco, thank you for that and all the work you're doing. Um, but you know, the other, that, the other, that's the other side of this is whether you're dealing with quartz or you're dealing with natural stone, it's sometimes when that stone gets to the distributor's yard or it gets to the fabricator, you know, there's a lot of unknowns about what's been applied to the stone, what's in the product. You know, on the quartz side, you're seeing a huge shift right now with most of the manufacturers trying to get as much silica out of it so that you reduce that. So, you know, this is kind of goes hand in hand, Mark, go back to the EPD stuff is, the, you know, that combination of the development of EPDs, you know, what's in the product as well as the sustainability effort coupled with the standards that are being set. You know, we're talking about all those questions and it goes from the stone testing side of what's being done to test the product, what are the appropriate applications. That's all part of this work that's being done. And if you have an interest, there are committees that are working on this. So don't hesitate to stop down at our booth afterwards, um, N529. You won't have any troubles finding us because if you can find the Brazilian pavilion, we're right next to it. I've never seen, um, Fabio, a, a display of banners like I saw with the Brazilian pavilion. But come down and see us and we'd love to talk more about it. You know, but Marco, the questions you're asking are, is this, are exactly what those committees are, are tackling. Um, and so forth. So yeah, uh, let's shift now a little bit over to, oh, Dwayne, go ahead. Well, I, I was just going to say, and I don't know that this will ultimately be what comes out of some of that committee, but wouldn't it be nice to have a label on the slab that tells you what processes it went through and, you know, hey, this went through this, don't do this kind of things, um, you know, to be able to communicate that information from essentially the cradle all the way to you as the fabricator. That, that's what these committees are set up to try and help alleviate. And, and again, you know what? It takes a lot of people to push the rock up the hill. And some of these topics we've been talking about, it takes a lot of people to push that rock. And so again, I'm appreciative that this board has said our organization's gonna lead it, but we need all of you to be participating, paying attention, and getting involved. Um, so all the topics we got up on the screen, I, I wanna talk a little bit now about my favorite one, and that's the promotion of natural stone. And, you know, when we're talking about promoting a product, it's all about getting those that are specifying it and selecting it. So the designers, the architects, the landscape architects, the consumers, you know, what are we doing to educate them and to get them to understand everything they can about our products? So, buddy, I'm going to turn it over to you to kind of talk about, you know, your perspective on this and things that, that our audience needs to know about things they can do to promote natural stone. So I guess this is the sexy topic? This is the sexy topic, yes. <laughs> okay, well, we, could, we, we can start with the fun stuff, like shows like this, uh, you know, here, here are coverings, Tice slash Stone Expo. Um, if you want to have more fun, you can go over to Verona, uh, Marmamac, and various other places. Brazil has a show every year, and you can get your education. You can look at uh, all kinds of natural stone um, right here in the, at, at what we can do. How many of you would love to have an audience of uh, decision makers and potential customers? Nobody? Who wants architects, interior designers to show up at your storeroom? Come on, everybody raise their hand. Okay, so, you know, we talk about the fun ones to show. You go to Las Vegas, you go out, you have some, you know, big, big dinners that put you to sleep an hour later and go around and see some, uh, you know, hokey shows and stuff. And um, the next thing you can do, uh, I'm a member of uh, several of the, uh, my local alphabets, the, I call them the NKBAs and HBRAs and NAHBs and all of that, and they have these monthly meetings. And what I can, and about once every other year, I get asked to do a audience type CEU presentation. So, and you know, those who I've, I've met at those monthly meetings with the wine and cheese stuff, uh, you know, now they're in the audience and I'm talking about everything I know of 40 years of working with Stone. And, uh, you know, and, and we have these uh, 18 CEU presentations that are just ready, they're locked and loaded, ready to go. Um, uh, pretty simple orientation for our membership. And 
you, you can go, whether you want to do an audience thing like I described or sit with, uh, at, a, at a designer's office, architect's office, with a pizza and a laptop in the conference room and you know, do the lunch and learn thing or whatever, you can do that. Also, Architectural Record is uh, one of the largest, it, it's, it's, it's the, uh, the big player in the uh, architectural magazine world there. We have partnered with them. We have eight webinars that the design community can link into and get their credits that way. So let's, let's, bring, let's wrap this up. How's this helping you? Remember, you, you remembered our website, right? Naturalstoneinstitute.org. If you want to give classes to architects and designers, we've given you the easy button, forward slash CEU, forward slash CEU. That's where you'll learn more about the 18 classes that Buddy talked about. We will give you, we will train you, we will give you the PowerPoints, we will help you with the credits. You will, in, in essence, become a speaker on behalf of the Natural Stone Institute. So we've done all the legwork for you. We've given you the biggest easy button possible. Okay, the second thing he talked about is the online classes. There are eight classes there. As you are entertaining architects and designers, not only can you give them classes, but you can say, hey, you're looking for credit? We've got eight additional classes. All you have to do is go online. So it's, remember the website, forward slash academy. So forward slash academy, forward slash CEU, and we have given you all the tools to connect. And don't be afraid of, of doing this. Every one of you have somebody on your staff that's a great salesperson and knows Stone. We've given you the easy button, we'll help you with that. Above and beyond that, don't forget that in the promotion of Stone, we're not just talking about architects and designers that are in the field, already practicing. We wanna reach those students as well. So we actually have a student kit that if you have a college, university, trade school, um, green, uh, design build school in your community, we have a student kit that you can give the faculty and that is something that they can in turn use in their curriculum with their students. And if I was you, I'd go to that professor and say, here's some classes, here's some courses, here's some content you can use in your class, but why not bring your students to, to my yard? bring them to my distribution facility. We'd love to tour them around. So um, I want to turn it over to Michael. Anything I want to else? Add, can I, oh, go ahead, yeah, I just, I just want to add that the timing couldn't be better uh, to, to, for the CEU presentations is pre-COVID, I used to do these you know, a couple times a year at various locations. I'm not much of a webinar guy. I don't want to sit in front of the computer and you know, I'd rather just like maybe turn off my camera and go walk around or something like that. Um, now that we're opening up and we're doing these fun in-person things, uh, I've, I've, I've already got three scheduled for the month of April and uh, you know, one tentatively for the month of May. So you know, we're opening up, people wanna have these live, these live uh, you know, events and so the timing couldn't be better. So if you haven't already uh, you know, signed up or in, uh, gone through the orientation to become a presenter, do it now. Yeah, another thing that we're, uh, we're doing at the Institute is we're publishing a magazine called Building Stone Magazine. It's digital, but it's also in print copy. So we are mailing them out to architects and designers. I don't know what the distribution is on that. But uh, the combination between the print and electronics, over 100,000 architects and designers. Yeah, and it's uh, everything to do with natural stone. It usually has three or four case studies in it speaks about technical challenges, speaks about uses, speaks about benefits. Um, so it's a really good magazine in the, in the promotion space for promoting natural stone and by, by way of case studies and some fascinating projects. So something else that we do uh, as an institute. Evan. Yeah, I was gonna say also there's uh, usenaturalstone.org. Uh, if you guys haven't been to it, I highly suggest uh, taking a gander through it. Again, usenaturalstone.org, another easy one to remember there. Make a lot of the easy buttons there, just uh, something simple there. So use natural stones, it's that simple. Those articles you can use on your own social media platforms and websites too. Yeah, we, we actually use a lot of those. We promote a lot of that, uh, share the knowledge as much as uh, we possibly can there. So I think it's very important. Uh, and again, when you have a chance, go there and see it. There's all types of information that, uh, you know, questions. Everybody has questions. And, uh, you know, to understand the product you're working with, understand what's out there. What, uh, what, what resources at your fingertips, and that's a great place to go to as well for that, so. All right. Anybody losing sleep at night? 
what are the stress points that keep you up at night? And so, uh, Evan, I'm going to have you go first. Uh, what keeps you up at night? What industry issue keeps you up at night? Oh, God, that's an easy one there. Uh, I'm sure everybody's familiar with the supply chain uh, issues going on in the world today. Uh, that has created a huge uh, challenge for everything. And uh, seeing it firsthand as we're importing, um, just I'll give a little bit of background on it for people who don't uh, do importing, but uh, you're talking container prices that went from $900 to $15,000. You're talking about shipping times that were 17 to 20 days that are now 60 to 90 days to get products in here. Ships sitting out in the in the harbor waiting to, uh, uh, to get in and uh, waiting for materials. Now that's just a part of it. Uh, as we were talking earlier uh, with the supply chain, uh, it doesn't just stop there. Obviously, uh, fabricators here can, can attest to the fact that uh, you're oftentimes held up by the cabinets that have to be installed or the appliances or something that's, that's holding you up now too. So your job gets pushed back, continuously gets pushed back. And then that affects me on another end where now we're sitting on product that can't be delivered for uh, installation and, uh, and we're, we're having challenges with that. So getting the product, uh, getting it on time, being able to fulfill orders, uh, seeing this price fluctuation uh, with shipping and uh, materials and everything going on around the world, you don't know what to, uh, what to expect. Uh, bidding on projects, we're, we're bidding on a project today, but we know that next week the cost could skyrocket. Um, and we don't know what to expect. So it's a very, uh, uh, you know, changing uh, situation that we're in right now, and we just have to kind of be able to adjust and adapt, and, uh, and that, that's what keeps me up at night, other than uh, my baby. So by show of hands, who has empathy for Evan? Who's struggling with this same issue? You know, these, this is a topic when, when you're with your peers in the industry, you, you know, let's raise those hands again. Everybody look around the room and see who else raised their hands. You just made some new best friends. Go talk to them because there are solutions to this if we talk it through. Dwayne, what's keeping you up at night? What's keeping me up at night is, you know, we've had, what, 18, 20 months of some of the hottest, fastest growing market we've seen in my lifetime in this industry. Um, on the tales of what was, you know, four or five really dark, scary months. And I worry about what's the next step in this. I, we can't sustain this kind of level of, of growth right now. Um, and where is that next cliff we're going to fall off of? Um, is it just going to be purely economic? Is there going to be some other thing that, that contributes to that? And, and as we're trying to scramble and keep up right now, you know, what investments we're making to try to achieve and maintain this level, and what's going to happen when that drops, you know, and how far is it going to drop? Um, that's really the thing that's kind of keeping me up, is where is the next step in all this? Because everything that's happened for the past two years is unnatural in the, the general business cycles we've been used to going through, and, and not really, so there's no real clear roadmap for what those next two years are going to be. Who shares Dwayne's concern? Hands. And how many of you will starting tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For those of you that weren't concerned about this, um, if Dwayne scared the heck out of you, sorry about that. Buddy, what's keeping you up at night? Dwayne being scary. <laughs> um, I, I, I was, you know, I've, I've thought about this. I. I think about you know the the uh, employ employee shortage. I've been very fortunate. I don't. I very rarely have turnover. I've uh, turned over one person on the on the helper level in the past year, and most of my uh, staff has been with me ten years plus. And uh, some of those newer guys are three or four years they've been with me. And um, you know what? I I take care of them as best as I can. Um, and so that you know isn't the supply chain. I get affected. So pretty much by the, um, you know, by the domino thing, by the, by the cabinet folks, or maybe there's no uh, consumables that I need, some epoxies or sandpapers or something, and I have to wait a little while to get that. But I've been, you know, my, my model is uh, go to a place like Evans, or I've got uh, 11, I think 10 supply places within 20 minutes of my shop. So my customer base will select what they want there, and if they can't find what they were looking for, well, they have nine other places, 
and instead of, oh, you know, two, three years ago they had a thousand choices, maybe there's 500 sitting on that uh, warehouse floor. So I, it, it's been pretty fortunate, um, you know, from my end. Um, I would probably have to, you know, answer similar to Dwayne uh, as, you know, what's going to happen next because I was kind of slowing up there in 2018, 2019, and I wasn't sure, you know, how things were going to go. And then those dark, scary months that Dwayne uh, had uh, mentioned, I said, well, gee, I, you know what, I don't know. You know, I don't know what's, what's going to go. And then all of a sudden I had too much work. And for a while it was like, how do I keep up? However, because of the supply chain stuff, now those uh, expectation, those wait times, turnaround times that were once 10 to 14 days for me, I can say three to four months and they say, sure, fine, make it five to six. The tile, I'm not getting my tile or my, uh, my uh, you know, whatever's coming after me for, for a while because they have to wait. So, um, uh, you know what, any problems I have today I think are luxury problems. So, Michael, it's keeping you up at night. Yeah, well, I guess it kind of summarizes a lot of what, uh, what's been spoken about here. I mean, short term is resources because we're all so busy. It's hard to find people to do the work right now. So we're having to either turn away work, which we hate to do, but you kind of have to turn away rather than not being able to service your clients. So we're making some of those difficult choices. And I share a, a lot of the same sentiments that I'm just puzzled at how costs keep going up, you know, lead times keep extending, Infl you know, gas prices are going off the charts. Real estate, I mean, for my Canadian friends out here, I mean, the Toronto market is insane. I mean, they put up a condo at $2,000 a square foot and it sells out in a weekend. You know, 300, 400 units, they're gone. And how sustainable is this? Like, it's just, it's really puzzling to me and it's something that certainly makes me think at night, what's next after this? To Dwayne's point, is it a sudden crash? Is it a slowdown? Is it a correction? I mean, I just can't see it being sustainable. And uh, almost everybody you speak to, everyone's busy, busier than they've ever been. And it's kind of unexplainable given all the indicators out there. And Jim, if, if I may real quick, I just have to say in 2020, we learned that uh, we have to be flexible and we have to be able to adjust. And, uh, and I think that's something not to forget, you know, as we're going through all this stuff. Uh, one of my favorite sayings is never let a good crisis go to waste. And uh, there's a lot of potential challenges out there. So, you know, really thinking outside the box and looking at new ideas and, and being involved and being aware. I think, you know, coming to something like this just to be aware of what's going on, what's on the forefront, it helps you kind of be a step ahead and what, where to maneuver when, uh, when things do go, you know, awry there. The only thing consistent in life is change. That's right, yeah. So before we close this session at 9 o'clock, we're going to give you an update on what the Natural Stone Institute is doing specifically on workforce development. And, and behind the scenes, there is another organization that we want you to know about, and that's the Natural Stone Foundation, which is actively raising money to help the Institute address some of these big picture issues. So we're gonna talk a little bit about workforce development and introduce you to the Natural Stone Foundation uh, before you leave today. But, you know, we said on the screen, input from the audience. So these guys have all shared what's keeping them up at night. I saw some hands go up. I saw some shaking of heads. Any of you have questions, and I'm going to go around with the mic, but who has a question or would like to share a perspective or ask a question about what we just talked about and what they just shared? Anyone? You're not going to make me talk about workforce development right away. So Everybody's here you go, Marco. Well here. So, Dwayne, I know you and your dad have been in business for, you know, half a century almost, it feels like. Um, we talked about what keeps you up at night, and uh, you talked about the unknown and what's around the corner and that cliff. Um, you can you talk to your dad at all and, and go back and, you know, check revisionist history and, and look at your data. I know you're a big data guy. And do you see any simulations to what is happening now? Are we repeating the same mistakes? Are we going all fall down that cliff? We're going to get all this work. We're going to buy all this equipment. And we're going to go gung-ho after it. And then it's going to fall out. And then we're going to be back to 2009, 2010, 2012 again. Um, are you using any of your past data, talking to your dad about, hey, Admiral, what do you think is going on? 
and can you relate that? Uh, Dwayne, you're on the hot seat, and if anyone else has a question after that, raise your hand and I'll walk over to you. Dwayne. Well, well that's tough. I can't get the old man out of bed by 10 anymore. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's tough to keep having those chats. But, you know, what are we doing? What are we looking at? You know, in a normal circumstance, I would think we'd be looking for a slowdown to a crash in the next year. But based on the past two years and COVID and how things are acting in what I'd consider an unnatural way anyway, I, I don't know. That, that's the uncertainty that puts, that's out there for me. So what are we doing? You know, I'm trying to take on as many clients as I can right now. Because in a year, if they're all doing half what they are today, I've still got that much more of a base to work with. Um, you know, I'm trying to maximize out the efficiencies of what we've got and not necessarily looking right now to, to drop another half million or a million dollars in additional equipment. Um, just trying to kind of hold that line to see what's going to happen. You know, the last thing I wanted to do in 2008, I had doubled the size of my building and my equipment and invested an extra million dollars, and then six months later, the market crashed on us. So I'm trying to kind of avoid that cliff. I'm trying to hold off as long as I can without hitting that button right now. Other questions, comments? Scott. So when you went around and talked about what keeps you up at night, what I didn't hear from any of you was competing materials eating into the natural stone market. Are, are, are you not threatened by other materials? I'm a fabricator, and as, as much as I prefer to work with natural stone, I got to keep my lights on. I, you know, whatever Mrs. Smith wants, I'll do my best to uh, do my best to get it. Now I educate them. I educate about the differences. I let them know that the uh, the quartz products there is a lot of competition. They're man-made, so they're not perfect like they're marketed to be. Anything man-made is not perfect, is it? You know how uh, have you ever got a cell phone that didn't work properly? You know in a lifetime, or in the last 20 years or whatever. Um, so it's you know it's there, and uh, you know it's like I said the. Uh, one of the consistencies in my life has changed. And, you know, years ago, I used to, you know, I, I turned up my nose and said, I'm not working with that stuff. And then I did a favor for somebody and I said, well, you know, it's really not that, that, that bad. But as I've learned that, you know, they, the, the, the products aren't as perfect as they say they are, but I educate my customer base. Yeah, I mean, we still, on average, you know, I tell you, I'm a fairly large big box cust uh, provider. We still run over 60% of our sales are in natural stone. Um, I know that's not necessarily true in a lot of areas or a lot of fabricators, but what we find is just like Buddy said, it's all about educating a consumer. There's a perfect product for every customer, and you know what? If you want a bright red countertop in your Five Guys Burgers, you know what? There's the product for you. You know, you want the natural stone, you want these things, but we found that if we educate customers about the product, dispel the rumors and fears that they pick up from TV and marketing and those kind of things, they want natural stone. People come in afraid to buy natural stone for various reasons. Um, and that's the kind of rumors we have to dispel for them and give them that comfort level. And I, I also think, you know, um, it doesn't keep you up at night. It's it's something that's somewhat within our control to an extent. And I think as we talked about earlier, there's quite a, thing, quite a few things that we're working on right now to start to push that and really promote the fact of, you know, the sustainability, which I think will be huge, and, and being able to prove all that. So we're, we're already working in that fashion. You know, I can't, I can't control if a ship's going to, how long it's going to take to get her or what the, the cabinet guy, you know. So I do think that this is relatively something that is somewhat within our control, and I think we're working towards that. So... Uh, that helps and, me sleep. And, and Scott, I want to go back to what was said earlier. Do not forget, we've got all the educational tools available to you to educate your audience about natural stone. Over 160 articles have been published in the last three years about natural stone that are on our website. You can take them and use them in social media. All the training materials, educate your staffs around it and so forth. So. You know, are we threatened? Not going to compete, Scott, with the big budgets of the big quartz manufacturers. But at the same time, you know, natural stone is not dying a slow death, okay? Natural stone is still the preferred product, and don't be scared to train your staff around advocating for natural stone. 
Um, other questions, comments, keeping you up at night? Other perspectives anyone wants to share? I also, real quick, have to say I think the uh, man-made products today are having to somewhat cut corners uh, and, and do things that are maybe unconventional. One thing we, you know, we talk about when you look at stone, what you see is relatively what you get. When you look at quartz, you don't know really what's inside of it or the other man-made products oftentimes. Uh, so really knowing about the products. And there's a lot of stuff that I know just from selling both that, that you know, they will hurt themselves by making these decisions they're making, which are short-term decisions. And, uh, and we, stay, you know, we, we still work with the, the oldest, uh, you know, one of the oldest uh, natural resources in the world there that, that you know, it is what it is. And so um, I, I, think, I think we're going to come out shining. I think we just kind of you know, keep, keep on moving forward and keep on promoting and, and good things ahead there. Okay. All right. We promised you we're going to talk about the next big thing we're working on. And so let's talk about who's having troubles finding employees. Who's looking for resources to retain their employees? So the Natural Stone Institute Board of Directors has put a lot of emphasis on workforce development. And we want to share with you a little bit about some of the resources and tools that are being created, many of them already available for you, many of them coming out later this spring or this summer. And this is all being done through generous support from the Natural Stone Foundation. Dwayne, share a little bit about what we're working on. Yeah, as far as the Natural Stone University part, um, we utilize it to onboard our new employees. You know, we get them in there, there's the safety videos, there's product knowledge stuff. Um, we track what classes they've taken, what scores they got on their test, all those kinds of things. Um, so we utilize that as a good tool to help get new employees up to speed on topics. Um, in the past, it's been a little clunky trying to navigate in there. Um, so over the past few months and ongoing, we're reorganizing a lot of that. Um, putting into different categories based on fabricators, couriers, whatever it may be, um, and trying to make that easier to use because it is a great tool um, for us to utilize in helping onboard and train new employees. Um, you know, why recreate the wheel in every company when we've already got all this knowledge database for them to use? As we continue to reorganize that, you know, we're identifying any holes we have in that training and working to build some new videos and, and classes to fill in those holes. And then um, once all that is done and put together, we're actually looking at going to like the Department of Labor and trying to set up official registered apprentice type programs. Um, we can also start looking at trying to take those locally and bringing them to uh, technical colleges and things like that and bring them a full curriculum for a stone setter or a fabricate, whatever it may be. Um, to try to help develop those types of classes as well. Let me put some, buddy, before you go, let me put some statistics behind us. There are over 250 hours of training on the Natural Stone University. Who are the fabricators in the room? There's over 80 hours just for fabricators. Who are the stone distributors? There's over 60 hours of training. Who's looking for content around safety? Whether it's, it's, it's on the install or or you're handling slabs or whatever, there are over 60 hours of safety training. There's, cert there's certificates and so forth. So this has all been set up for you. It's an easy button. And, and so the next phase of this, as, as Dwayne said, is fabricators, here's your fabricator button. Here's all the courses. Stone distributors, here you go. Couriers, here you go. Retailers, here you go. All being organized with certificates, with a transcript, and you can download all the resources. And let's say you don't have an email for every employee. You don't have a computer for every employee. You can take the resources, download them, and administer them in a group setting, go back and record attendance. This is a pretty slick program. Workforce development, we're giving you the tools to retain your employees. There are now many, many employers when they hire a new employee, they're requiring them to go through these classes the first week, second week, third week. And we've actually developed syllabus for hiring new employees, taking them through the safety stuff, all available to you. Buddy, what's next? Well, um, has anybody ever asked for help? Ever? Nobody. Okay. 
Um, one, of my, w one of my most important tools is not, you know, the saw or this or that or, or whatever. It is asking for help. And, you know, it doesn't matter what the situation is. Um, we have asked the, uh, well, we've, we learned that the tile and wood flooring industries have uh, some training, uh, some training programs that, that work very well. And we've asked, they're willing to share. We're going to, you know, take what they have, use what we need. Um, you know, so it's a nice template to get started. So, uh, you know, so that's, you know, right there. See what the neighbors are doing. And um, if it's going to work for us, we're going to make it work. If it's not going to work, then we won't use whatever, you know, whatever it is that doesn't work. So we talked about all the classes. We talked about we're setting up apprenticeship programs. Michael, beyond apprenticeship programs, we're doing other stuff. Talk about internships. Yeah, one of our uh, key initiatives in our strategic plan a few years ago was to develop some of these programs to really attract people to the industry, young people coming out of high school, coming out of college. How do we get them interested in in what we do. There really is nothing in the educational uh, program that really speaks to, to our industry or what we do. So we've created a turnkey template for either companies or local colleges or high schools that they can use to train staff. It's kind of like a broad scoped uh, overview of what the industry all, is all about. It has samples of different types of stones within it. Um, and it can be something that you can take on as a company and offer it to your local community or, or invite people in, or you can approach local high schools or trade schools and, and let them know about it and it's available to them that they can, you know, a prof can take it on and, and do a small program with the kids on it. And it's all completely set up for them. Uh, exercises, um, you know, assignments, all kinds of stuff, it's all, it's all completely laid out. And to add to that, so the internship program is really designed for you to go into the local schools and say, we'd like to employ an intern. And, and how many would like to have a designer student come in and work in your showroom for a summer or during the semester? So it's really turnkey. Take advantage of it. Evan, anything to add? I do, actually. Um, uh, there's a program we do, the uh, Women in Stone uh, Mentorship Program. Uh, it's a fantastic program. Uh, I, I've been a mentor, and uh, one of my employees is currently a mentee at the moment right now. And the engagement uh, that comes from that uh, is fantastic. Um, you're not just creating an employee or having an employee. Now you're getting somebody who's engaged in your, in your industry, in your, in your um basically specific to what you do. And so it, it keeps them around. It really starts to build a career. I think that's been something that's been great. Um, and then also, you know, as you mentioned, I think it's a great idea going to the local trade schools and, you know, starting to get the samples into the hands and start to get the designers and the architects interested in, in these products uh, ahead of time before they even get out. So they, they have a, a head start in, in knowing about, you know, the natural stone and how it works and everything on that as well. Dwayne, anything to add? Um, staying on the topic of the women in stone side, you know, they're one of our greatest advocacy groups we have in the Institute. Um, they also have a video series as well, presenting different careers within the stone industry. I think three of those are already up on the website, and they're continuing to develop uh, more content on that as well um, to help promote uh, careers within our industry. So I, I mentioned that all the work that's being done on workforce development and getting you all these tools. Fabricators, you got a place to go to get stuff. Installers, distributors, couriers, it's all broken down for you. Most of this work is being done through our, we have a charitable organization, a charitable arm, the Natural Stone Foundation, and they are raising money to help cover the cost. So everything we've just described is above and beyond you know, we can't support this just with membership dues. So we have a foundation that's working, a partner with us. I want to just uh, point out a couple people in the room. Uh, Tony Malasani is the vice chair of our foundation. Uh, Pam Hammond is our program manager for our foundation. Pam, raise your hand. Uh, Pam can't stand. She twisted her ankle the other day, so I'm not going to ask her to stand. But stop down in our booth and please ask about how you can get involved. Who has, feels their company's been successful? Come on, hands, go up. This is your time to give back to the community, and so please consider getting involved in learning more about the Natural Stone Foundation. Now, I've had this slide up 
for a few minutes now. Some of the best education anywhere happens where? When you're networking and having a drink with a friend. So I want to invite all of you to come to our member reception tomorrow night. If you are not a member of the Natural Stone Institute, I still want you to come. Be our honored guest. Come have a drink. Network with industry peers. There were people that raised hands. You know, that's where you're going to have the time to say, hey, I was at that session. Here's how we're tackling this issue. How are you doing it? And then on Thursday, we're doing our initial launch of a new series through our Women in Stone Advocacy Group. It's called our Legacy Series. And we're going to be having a reception. We're going to be interviewing Barbara Cohen on her um, amazing career. And it's just going to be a great night. So both Wednesday and Thursday night, we have events. Please plan on coming and joining us. Uh, before we close up the panel, um, any questions for our panel? Evan, any parting words? Yeah, obviously, uh, well, first of all, we're in Vegas and everybody showed up early this morning, so thank you for that. That's a, that's a win. Um, but uh, obviously everybody's here with uh, consideration and a care and a concern for how the natural stone industry is going to work and look in the future. Uh, we all want to be a part of that. Um, it doesn't just stop here with what you learn. You know, feel free to reach out to any one of us and find out how you can get involved. There's a lot of opportunities to get involved, not just to be working in the industry, but to help shape the industry. And uh, a lot of people here are passionate about what we do. I know that. I know I am, and I know a lot of you are as well. So uh, make sure you come out to any one of us at any time. If you guys have any questions, you want to get involved, you want to help out, you want to help pave the way, uh, we're happy to have as much help as we can to get there. Come on out to the reception tomorrow night. Jim's picking up the tab. Yeah, that is true. I'll drink to that. Michael. Yeah, I would encourage you all to get engaged as much as possible. I mean, my, I started the company as a sole proprietor 30 years ago, attended trade shows, met some fantastic people, and really fostered a lot of the growth for, for our company. Um, taught, you know, met great friends and in, in, in the industry that we don't do work together but we're, we share the same uh, love for stone and you know enjoy each other's company having a drink talking about uh, various things in in our industry and uh, you know growing the company to about 40 employees now and we're all working in the stone industry and it's a lot of by attending things like this social events and meeting meeting a lot of great people so I encourage you all to get involved buddy as the, other, as the others have said, you know, get, get engaged. I, I, I've learned that I can't keep what I, as paradoxical as it sounds, I can't keep what I have unless I give it away. And, you know, whether it is, you know, serving in a manner like, uh, you know, like this on a, you know, on a board or just uh, sharing some, some data to help create some standards and EPDs or whatever it might be, mentoring somebody, mentoring, you know, it doesn't, you don't even have to mentor a woman, take on, take on, a, you know, uh, a man and, 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 well, that sounded kind of weird. Um, and, and, you know, just share what you have. You know, when I share, I end up, you know, get, you know getting it back in, uh, you know, twofold at least. And, um, and, you know, I know Jim asked if there are any questions. For those who might have been a little, little bit shy, please come by the booth, uh, 529 uh, and 529. And uh, if you have a question that, you know, maybe you really didn't want to share with 100 people in a room, just come and ask uh, one of the staff or one of the volunteers who just might be hanging around. And, you know, just thank you for, like Evan said, getting up early and coming out. I know that it was easy for the East Coast folks, but, you know. So throughout this morning's session, you've seen firsthand how the Natural Stone Institute is leading for standards, leading for promotion, leading for workforce development. But we also want to thank Coverings for leading and for asking us. All of the stone sessions being held at Coverings are being brought to you largely through the work of the Natural Stone Institute. But I want you to join me in thanking these gentlemen and Katie Jensen, who's here by, by, with best wishes and thoughts. Let's thank them for their leadership in pushing the organization to help. And we've made a commitment for each of the stone sessions. Our panelists will be down in our booth so that first hour at Coverings, you can find them in our booth. So come down and ask questions. But will you please join me in thanking Michael, Buddy, Dwayne, and Evan. Thank you.